Hey everybody, it's that time once again. We're here in the beautiful San Fernando Valley in my hometown of Reseda. And like I promised in my last Valley video, today we're gonna to be taking a look at Valley Plaza and Laurel Plaza. We're also gonna be revisiting some locations that we've already looked at in some of my past Valley videos. Just kind of giving you an update on some of those spots. There's some other locations we're gonna look at. It's gonna be a good time. Before we get started, I wanna take a moment to thank all my newest Patreon supporters, and there's a few of them this time, so again, I'll be reading it off of a piece of paper because my memory's not so good anymore. So a huge thank you goes out to Carrie Bilstein, Dirk Stick, Slip, Val Lee Girl, Roger McShane, Lisa Holland, Robert Hoops, and Christopher Green. Thank you all so much. Seriously, you have no idea how much your support means to me. Now, let's go see what we can find. Now we've passed right by this building a few times in some of my other videos, but whenever I get out here to the valley and I start going through the memories, sometimes I just forget to mention things because there's so many different memories going on. But this is the former location of Filmation. And Filmation was around from 1962 to 1989 and they were responsible for a ton of our favorite cartoons growing up, including various versions of Batman, the Tom and Jerry comedy show, the adventures of Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, and of course, one of my all-time favorites, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. All of the He-Man cartoons were done here, including the Christmas special. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas, young lady. Now, supposedly, the staff at Filmation used to like to head over to a dive bar that was right down the street called The Bunker. And The Bunker used to be located right here, but unfortunately, this entire shopping center was torn down a couple of years ago. But I remember The Bunker well. It was located right over here in the corner of the shopping center. And you can see Filmation was right over there, and then The Bunker would have been right here. So it was a short walk. I thought it would be worth mentioning this business because it's been here on Sherman Way for as long as I can remember. I want to say it's been here my entire life. This is Small Car, and according to their website, they've been in business since 1975, and I don't know for sure that it's been at this exact location since 1975, but like I said, I remember it being here my entire life, so I'm gonna assume that they've been at this location since 1975. So Small Car is an auto parts store that specializes in Volkswagen. And according to their website, they also specialize in Porsche, Audi, BMW, and Mercedes. And I've never actually been inside Small Car because I've never owned one of those vehicles. But like I said, I remember this being here my entire life, so I thought it was worth a mention. And then just two businesses over is another place that I remember being here my entire life. This is the Great Wall Chinese Restaurant. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any information on exactly how long the Great Wall has been here, but like I said, I'm pretty sure it's been here as long as I've been alive and probably before that. I remember coming here and having dinner with my wife when we were dating. We were the only ones inside, and it's a pretty large uh, dining room, and I noticed that they had karaoke. So when we were done eating, I looked in the karaoke book and sure enough, they had some prints and I got up and I sang, I would die for you. I was just singing to my wife cause no one else was in there. And then the entire staff came out from the kitchen and they stood at the far end of the dining room watching me perform prints. And my wife sat there probably feeling pretty embarrassed, but yeah, funny memory. Now this is another business that I remember being here on Sherman way for as long as I can remember. This is Ultimate Sound and Lighting, and I've been coming here since I was a teenager, even before I was a DJ, when I was just in a band, but I had an interest in stage lighting. I used to come here to buy lights and uh, just talk to the owner and get advice, and really nice guy. Uh, it was a really cool shop. I haven't been here in a really long time. Uh, it looks like they've started doing sign printing, uh, you know, I'm sure business has been tough and so he had to uh, start doing other things to keep the business going and I'm glad he's been able to because like I said he was a really nice guy and it was a cool shop so I'm glad to see that he's still around. This is Sound City Studios, a legendary recording studio with so much history. 
Uh, just to name a few artists that have recorded here, Elton John, Fleetwood Mac, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Pat Benatar, Rick Springfield, Fear, Barry Manilow, Rat, Guns N' Roses, Nirvana, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Weezer, and so many more. This is where Fear recorded the record. This is where Dio recorded Holy Diver. Guns N' Roses did sessions for Appetite for Destruction. This is where Nirvana did Nevermind. Green Jelly recorded Serial Killer. Weezer recorded Pinkerton. I mean, so much history inside of this building. It's amazing. This is the Winnetka Movie Theater, and I've shown this before in one of my videos when we talked about drive-ins, because this used to be the Winnetka Drive-In Theater, but I thought we would revisit this and do a little bit of an update because the news has recently come out that the Winnetka Theater is going to be demolished and they're gonna build an industrial complex here. So the Winnetka Theater uh, closed at the beginning of the pandemic and they decided not to reopen, and so now it's gonna be demolished. And kind of a bummer because when they got rid of the drive-in, that was really sad, but then when they put a movie theater here, at least there was still kind of that connection. It was still a movie theater, but now that it's going to become an industrial complex, there's going to be no connection to the original Winnetka drive-in. So that's gonna be really sad. And I didn't come to this theater too much. I know I came here a few times. Uh, I had a friend that worked here for a while and I remember he got us into a couple of movies for free. I remember coming here another time with my wife when we were dating. I don't remember what we saw, but I remember we were standing in the lobby and Sinbad came in with his kids and they didn't charge him to come into the theater. And so, yeah, those are the memories I have of coming to the Winnetka Theater. And again, I just thought I would update all of you as to what's going to be happening to this theater. Right now we're in North Hollywood, California, and this, was Valley Plaza, well, is Valley Plaza, but it's definitely not what it used to be. Valley Plaza opened in 1951 and claimed to be the largest shopping center on the West Coast and the third largest shopping center in the entire country. But as time went on and more malls began to open, business started to decline, and after the 1994 earthquake, Valley Plaza suffered extensive damage, a lot of the stores closed, and they never reopened. This is the old movie theater, and it was definitely a favorite amongst customers of Valley Plaza. Vector Hold, who you all know for the amazing music that he contributes to some of my videos, he reached out to let me know of his memories of Valley Plaza. He says his earliest memory is coming to this theater to see Return of the Jedi for his birthday with all of his friends, and then a couple of years later, returning to this theater to see Goonies on opening weekend. He writes, the theater was full of kids my age, we were all cheering and high-fiving. It was like being at the Super Bowl. After the movie, my mom would pick me up and we would go to Licorice Pizza Records that was just a few blocks away. He also adds that one of his fondest memories took place right here in the lobby of this theater. It was the first time seeing and playing the video game Dragon's Lair. I had multiple subscribers reach out to me and a lot of them had memories of this movie theater, especially later on when it became a $1.50 theater. This building used to be Sears, and it was one of the first department stores to open here at Valley Plaza, and it just recently closed, I believe in 2020. Subscriber Anchovy Breakfast Club wrote in to let me know that in the summer of 1960, he saw John F. Kennedy give a short speech on a wooden platform in the parking lot of Sears. He also included a photo that he found on the internet of John F. Kennedy driving down Laurel Canyon, and you can see the Valley Plaza sign in the background. This building, now known as Valley Plaza Tower, opened in 1960, and at the time it was the tallest structure in the San Fernando Valley, and it's also considered one of the first skyscrapers in Los Angeles. Over the years, it's had multiple murals on the side of the building, including one for the 1984 Olympics, and another celebrating the Los Angeles Raiders. The Valley Plaza Tower is definitely an iconic building here in the San Fernando Valley. Subscriber Denise N says she remembers there being a Barbizon modeling school inside this building. Does everybody remember Barbizon? Want to train to be a model or just look like one? Nobody does it better than Barbizon. Barbizon's 32-page book tells all about it. It's for men and women 13 and older. Call for your copy now. She says they were doing an open call for new models and she considered trying out, but decided to pass. 
She also remembers coming to Valley Plaza to shop at Standard Shoes and Stride Right. Where this banquet hall now is, this used to be Shaber's Cafeteria, and that Miller's Outpost is where the Gentlemen's Club now sits. Brian B. says he remembers going to Shaber's Cafeteria on weekends with his family. He says the food was always good, and overall it was a cool place that he wished still existed. Where West Coast College now is, this used to be J.C. Penney's. And where this dialysis center now is, this used to be McMahon's Furniture. Does anybody remember McMahon's Furniture? It's dollar days at McMahon's Furniture Stores. Buy any recliner from McMahon's big selection, including Lazy Boy and Lane Action, and for only one dollar, get our best-selling reversible cushion swivel rocker. Subscriber Danny G wrote in to reminisce about all the stores he used to visit here, like the warehouse music store located next to the J.C. Penney's and the old War Wars department store. He also remembers visiting Builder's Emporium on weekends with his dad to buy stuff to fix the house. Valley Plaza is also a popular filming location. It can be seen in the old Dragnet TV show, the music video for Randy Newman's I Love LA, the 1999 movie Magnolia. This building was used as blockbuster video in the movie Captain Marvel, and this section was used in the movie Straight Outta Compton when Ice Cube and Dr. Dre are driving around looking at the Los Angeles riots. Right across the street from Valley Plaza, this used to be Laurel Plaza, and the May Company that was located at Laurel Canyon and Oxnard, it was originally part of Valley Plaza, but in 1968, they built an enclosed mall and called it Laurel Plaza, and it became its own thing. Laurel Plaza Mall closed after the 1994 earthquake. May Company, which became Macy's, was the only business that remained. It later closed in 2016, and the entire Laurel Plaza was demolished. It's now NoHo West. So we've actually been here before uh, in my very first video, but since we were in the area, I just wanted to come back and kind of revisit it, uh, get a closer look. This was the first house I ever lived in. Uh, I lived here from the time I was born till I was about uh, seven years old. And this is the closest I've been to the property since we moved out and real crazy to be back here. I have a lot of memories uh, standing here looking at this driveway. I remember coming out here and riding my bike in this driveway. It seemed a lot bigger back then. Uh, there used to be a bike path right here. Uh, there's actually a picture of me riding my bike on this path. I remember sitting in this driveway, opening up Garbage Pail Kids with my brother. The ice cream truck stopped right here in front of our driveway, and my brother and I sat there opening up 4th Series Garbage Pail Kids. Uh, I remember being out in this driveway on 4th of July, lighting off fireworks with my dad. And I also remember uh, the night that our house got burglarized, and the cop car was parked right there. And I came out, and I just stood there staring at the police as they were doing paperwork, and they probably thought, that I was some kind of a weirdo. But yeah, really crazy being back here, uh, being so close to the house. Like I said, I haven't been this close to the property since I moved out. So this park right here is just a couple hundred feet from my old house that we were just at, which is just right over there. But I only remember actually coming to this park twice. Uh, once I came here with my dad and my brother so that we could play baseball. And that was right here in front. Um, and it didn't go very well because I wasn't very good at sports. The other time that I remember coming here was just a couple of days after my parents got me my first bike that didn't have training wheels. They got it for me for my birthday and my dad brought me over here so that I could ride my bike on this bike path right here. So I haven't stepped foot inside this park since those pictures were taken and I think I had just turned six years old in those pictures and that was the last time I was ever in this park. So really crazy to come back here all these years later and ride my bike, well, ride my son's bike in the same spot where I took those pictures. And even cooler to come back all these years later and have my son ride his bike in the same spot where I took those pictures. This is another place that I talked about in my very first video. Very briefly, just as we drove by, I pointed it out because this was my very first school, Satakoy Street Elementary School, and I went here from kindergarten until second grade, and then we moved out of the area uh, but yeah, I've got a lot of memories here. First one that comes to mind would have happened right here in front of the school. And I know all of us that grew up in the 80s and 90s, this is one of our favorite school memories, and that would be the Scholastic Book Fair. Uh, that would have happened, I'm not sure which door, but one of these doors 
And I'm pretty sure that's where I got my Garbage Pill Kids sticker album. And I also remember getting some kind of a My Pet Monster book. And I also have a slight memory of a Get Along Gang book. I remember coming out of the door with my books, being really excited and running across the grass right here. And my mom would have been waiting for me in the car right over here. She would drop me off here every morning. And then I would walk through these front gates into school. And this was the auditorium where we had all of our assemblies, all of our dare assemblies and stranger danger assemblies, all that fun 80s stuff. A lot of memories out here on this yard. This is the kindergarten yard. And my kinder, there was a few kindergarten classes. Mine was somewhere else in the school, but uh, we all came to the same yard for lunch and recess. So yeah, a lot of memories right here. My mom volunteered here at the school and she worked in that classroom. Um, that right there used to be the old style metal jungle gym. And I remember coming here on the first day of school. It was just like an orientation and sat in one of those classrooms right there. And I remember being really terrified, sitting on the ground, crisscross applesauce style, and um, all these kids around me. And I was really scared because I had never been in a situation like that. And then I remember looking up at the door and seeing my mom and dad standing there, looking down at me, smiling and feeling a little bit better. But uh, during that entire uh, first day of school orientation, whatever, all I could think about was that metal jungle gym and wanting to go outside and play on that jungle gym. And there's actually a picture of me uh, when the orientation was done, my parents let me go out, play on the jungle gym for a few minutes. And then, oh, this was one of my favorite things right here. There was a little um, track drawn on the ground. Uh, now, like with everything else, I remember it being a lot bigger, but from looking at this yard, it must not have been that big, but there was a little track drawn on the ground and we had tricycles and, oh, actually, you know what? It's still here, they just moved it to the other side. But yeah, there's a track right there with the tricycles. And that was my favorite thing. You usually had to wait a long time for it because all the kids wanted to do that. Um, another funny memory that I have happened over by that jungle gym. There were two twin girls in my class, uh, Missy and Chrissy. And I remember being by that jungle gym with my friends playing, uh, all the boys. And then we looked over and Missy and Chrissy and another group of girls were walking towards us. One of the two twin sisters, I'm not sure which, she had something over her head to look like a uh, wedding veil. Probably it was just her jacket, but she was walking towards me, um, you know, like she was getting married and all of the girls were humming the wedding march. And my friends all yelled, ah, she's coming to marry you. And we all started screaming and running around in chaos and I don't know stupid kid memories, but standing here, I'm remembering all that. And of course, once you get into first grade, they release you out into the big kids yard. And unlike everything else, I keep saying in this video, I remember things being a lot bigger. I actually remember this being a lot smaller. I mean, this schoolyard is huge. I just remembered a really ridiculous story that would have took place straight back there by the fence. Uh, so I was hanging out with all my classmates and I said the word, but, and all of my friends started saying, Ooh, we're telling you said a bad word. And I was such a dork that I thought it would be better to just tell on myself. So I went over to my teacher and I said, um, Miss Reed, I'm sorry. I said a bad word. I said, but, and she just said, okay, well try not to say it again. Um, I remember that night telling my dad about it and he got kind of upset and he was like, that's not even a bad word. Why did you tell on yourself? Uh, and this is the worst part of it. I wasn't saying but as in B-U-T-T. -T. I was saying but as in B-U-T. So yeah, that's how much of a dork I was. <laughs> okay, so one more random memory just popped into my head and it would have took place right over here in the corner of the schoolyard. And for some reason, I remember that because I remember that we were standing by that fire hydrant on the corner. But if you remember in the 80s, a lot of people were worried about going to war with Russia, and I know that's something that's kind of come back around, uh, but I was standing out there with a classmate, and I was telling him that I was worried that we were gonna get bombed by Russia. Obviously, I had no idea what I was talking about because I was like six years old, and I was just repeating stuff that I heard on TV, uh, but then I said to the kid, you know, you're not Russian, are you? Because I guess I was worried that I was going to offend him, and he just kind of shrugged and said, I don't know, I don't think so. Anyways, sorry, 
These are the random memories that are popping into my head as I stand out here on the schoolyard. And it was right here in between these buildings where I saw Garbage Pill Kids for the first time and traded Garbage Pill Kids with my friends. It was also right in between these buildings where my first grade teacher accidentally told me the truth about the Tooth Fairy. Yep, I'll never forget it. And right here is the cafeteria where mini Kurt Crucial would sit down every day and have his lunch. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this video. Sorry, it was kind of a long one. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.